Um, honestly, I have to say my high school teacher who said that you could be a scientist. And he said so many times that at the end I believed it and I imagined myself that I will be a scientist and imagine going to work and every day figure out something. And uh, I have never seen a scientist. I grew up in a very small town. And, uh, but I decided that I will be a scientist. So somebody is believing you, you know, maybe that's the inspiration. So <clears throat> science is fun and uh, to be a scientist this is a fun job. And uh, what is exciting is that uh, there is a complexity and then it is you who can solve it by reading articles or doing experiments and, uh, and uh, put together things which maybe nobody did and then you realize what's going on. And I, I, the joy that you will be the first one to, to know that this is how things happen. And uh, so that's, that's fun. It is very similar to be a, like a, a detective or an investigator on, on, a, on a, you know, a crime. But at the end of it, you don't find the perpetrator. You find a solution. And maybe that solution would help somebody. That's what is the beauty about. Maybe somebody who is sick and then your discovery can contribute to their healing. I have to say that uh, people judge me unsuccessful when I felt very successful because in the laboratory I was in full control of doing experiments and getting questions asked and then getting the answer for it. Of course, you never get the answer because when you do an experiment, you get more questions instead of the answer. But this is what uh, exciting and uh, and uh, yes, it seems you know that um, uh, not getting funded and uh, there are other uh, difficulties. But actually, uh, when you are a scientist, you constantly had to find fight the failures and, and uh, solve problem difficulties. You keep repeating, you don't understand. So it is like um, scientists are uh, those who can get up and, and keep working with the same enthusiasm. And that's actually some defined success that you can stand up and you can keep on with the same enthusiasm like before. <laughs> I would. Uh, uh, I have seen the young scientists are comparing themselves to the others, and they, you know, seeing that they are maybe less uh, um, hard workers, or and they are advancing. And I say that don't do that. You have to focus on what you can do. And if you already took away your attention and paying attention on somebody else you know, you won't succeed. You have to focus on what you can do, what your project is. And uh, I also tell them, you know, science is, and to be a scientist is not for everybody. If you like to follow instruction, maybe you have to go to military, you like to be in the spotlight, like I am right now, you have to be an actress or maybe a reporter, uh, because a scientist is usually thinking in the laboratory and uh, is not in the spotlight like I am. So that you have to enjoy no matter what kind of work you are doing. That's the most important. And I tell them also that uh, physical and mental health is very critical. So I used to exercise every morning. I was running six kilometers, even when 10 years ago I worked in Germany and on the Rhine, I run uh, six kilometers. Once I even run the marathon. Yeah, I was 50 years old and uh, just I set up the goal that one to make it and that's it. And uh, you have to learn how to handle stress. That's also very important. And uh, I was very lucky that uh, I learned from uh, Hans Scheyer, who was Hungarian, and he was actually studying stress. And in Hungary, when I was 16 years old, read his book and learned how to handle it. And the mantra is, I can tell the young uh, one, and even the old one, if they don't know about it, is that you have to focus on what you can do. Not that what your boss should do, your wife should do, your neighbor should be quiet or something. You have to decide what you can do about that. And that's what is uh, taking away all of the stress.
I um, have to say uh, my father was a butcher and I heard that when I was a little, I was curious when he opened the pig and I want to see what is inside, whereas my sister and my mother did not see, wanted to see that. I don't remember that, but they said that I was standing there seeing that no, this animal was moving, no, it's not moving, what made this animal move? I, I don't know, but uh, definitely the teachers, I am very grateful to them because in elementary school already had excellent teachers and we went to, like with the biology teacher, we just went to outside and, uh, you know, in the fall and he picked up the leaves and said, oh, it is yellow. Is it the yellow became because it was green before? Or maybe the yellow was behind the green and the green is gone and, you know, he made us to think, hmm. Or the red leaves, you know, where the red is coming from. And uh, so I am very grateful to them. And uh, actually in elementary school, I already competed in a different uh, uh, biology competition. And at uh, uh, eight, eighth grade, I was the third best in Hungary. Yes. I have to say that um, when I went back to Hungary to my alma mater and uh, and it was a beautiful sunny day and several hundred people were there and they were cheering and I was just uh, so surprised. And then in the evening that uh, a few thousands were there and 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 they every time they said, you know, say something. And uh, uh, in the moment I just remember that uh, when the announcement was made, and on that day we went to the university, there was a flash mob, and, and then after that, uh, uh, Drew Weissman went to his team to celebrate, and I went home. Because, and then I told the uh, people there who were waiting in, uh, you know, in uh, Hungary, I told them, no, I am here. I want to celebrate with you. <laughs> And, uh, and because the city also, Saget is very important because uh, actually I, uh, you know, studied there for five years and that was fun time. I met my husband there, we married, my daughter was born in Saget and so all of the happy times that uh, I was in this city and so happiness was belonged to that city and so I told them. And they were cheering, any word I said, you know, they were cheering. <laughs> You know, it's most likely I would spend uh, the money for education and uh, helping, uh, you know, students. I don't really like to brag about things, but, you know, I all, all of the award I got, uh, you know, in Hungary, I never took out from the country I, I gave to, um, you know, organization like helping underprivileged children. I myself uh, benefited from that because my parents had just elementary school education and, you know, going to the university, you know, even getting a high school diploma was in the first in the family. And I mean, my sister get also high school diploma and she also get a PhD in economy. But, you know, we were the uh, from there. And uh, so I think that um, those children whose parents may be um, not uh, educated enough to see that uh, the future brightness of their children should be followed up in higher education. So there are programs there, so I gave money for that. And I also at the university where I, my alma mater, University of Seged, you know, that uh, some uh, prize money I channeled there. And um, yeah, so, and even in other uh, awards like mm -hmm. Princess Asturias, I, to the local kids, I gave the money back. So uh, I was born 68 years ago in Hungary and I was up until I was 30 years old, I was living in Hungary and, and it was, uh, you know, I get my education, my PhD, I did started research on RNA, even lipids I did uh, their studies. So uh, moving to the United States was uh, not easy because I lost my position in Hungary and uh, so I tried to find a job in Europe and I applied for a couple of jobs, but um, I couldn't apply for, for finance because it was, we were behind the Iron Curtain. And uh, eventually, you know, I had to go all the way to America. I am one of those uh, scientists. I never dream about going to America. Oh, everybody was talking, oh, America, that. I was very happy in Hungary, but I had to go. 
And um, so I ended up in Philadelphia. And uh, in the system was at that time in the communist Hungary that you are allowed to leave the country with $50 per person. And because I got the job offer, I even was not eligible for the $50. And so with the, the family, my daughter was two and a half years old, my husband, we had the hundred dollar. And so that was uh, difficult, you know, to imagine that <laughs> we are arriving and for one month how we will survive. And um, so we had a Russian made car and then we sold to my colleague uh, and, uh, and then on the black market, we exchanged the Hungarian currency to um, actually, pound, we get like 800 pounds because uh, they had just pounds, not the dollar. And, <laughs> and that's what we get. And that's how we started in America. <laughs> to imagine that you go there in 1985, you don't have credit card, you have no cell phone, iPhone. And, you know, we didn't have any. At that time, that was nobody had. And uh, I have nobody there to, to know, no family member ever, you know, get to America, and then no classmate, no teacher, nobody. And then you just have to learn so quickly how to survive. I mean, it was a cultural shock, you know. I mean, uh, arriving immediately, they said, now that you have to select a bank. I said, why, I don't need a bank. I never had in Hungary a bank. And they said, how did you get the salary? I said, oh, it was in an envelope. It was counted all of the last pennies in it. <laughs> and they said, oh, we don't do that. And so everything was, uh, was uh, you know, uh, a shock. Because um, going from Hungary today to there is, would be very different. You know, but uh, in 1985, it was uh, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I grew up there. My sister lives there. My mother, she passed away uh, five years ago, but she lived there, and uh, and I have relatives there, and uh, and I grew up there. But of course, you know, the, that Hungary which I left is very different now. I I have to say that when I worked in the last ten years in Germany, I felt in Germany more a Hungarian. You know, I could see things there that reminded me my home. And uh, of course, you know, I'm happy to go back and, and uh, talk to fellow scientists and uh, meet my colleagues and fellow students. And, but uh, yeah, so it, it is different. And that's the same way for even for the United States, because when I was working in Germany and going back, now I, I go back to uh, University of Pennsylvania. I worked there 24 years. I walk there and I don't know the people. You know, they are changed. And so, and of course the campus also changed a lot. I, um, I used to work at cardiology department, which belonged to the cardiology uh, section, which belonged to the department of medicine. But then from there, I moved to surgery department, which is a different building, adjacent building but I know the code for the Xerox machine only in the medicine. Surgery where I worked had no Xerox machine and we always had to Xerox uh, uh, copy the scientific articles. So I keep going back to the prior place and then I could see this guy I had never seen before and then I, you know, I introduced myself because I kind of like to brag and, and I told him what I am doing, why he was Xeroxing, he's very quiet and um, so I mentioned him that I work with uh, mRNA and, uh, and he said that he came from Anthony Fauci's lab. At that time, you know, it didn't ring any bell for me, Fauci. It was not in the television all the time. And then, and then uh, he said that he wants to make a therapeutic or prophylactic uh, vaccine for HIV. And we started to talk more. And then I told him that I can make uh, mRNA for, for him. And then that's, he gave me the uh, genes and I cloned and I made the RNA and we started to work together. So it is true. We met at the Xerox machine. But that part that we were wrestling and fighting, that was not true. <laughs> we looked at the data, scientific results. Then we were not different. We cut each other words. 
what does it mean, what we should do, not we should do that, and, you know, that we were talking like that. But otherwise, you know, that he's uh, uh, quiet more. According to his uh, wife, he has a limited number of uh, words he can say uh, one day. And when he goes home, he already used up all. <laughs> He's a physician, so when we looked at some data, you know, he was thinking about, you know, some disease-related thing. And I was more thinking about the basic science because I am a biochemist and, and uh, we educated each other. So I learned from modern immunology, uh, uh, vaccinology from him. And he learned the RNA part. So that's, uh, that's what thing, you know, that uh, where the innovation can come. You might have a big team and you are investigating some phenomenon from many different directions. A huge team can do that. Or there are two persons who are in different field. They understand each other, they um, respect each other and educate. And then they come up with something that, oh, I can do that, I can do, and then they proceed. I mean, the number one thing, you have to enjoy what you are doing. So it is important, you have to realize that you like the things, what you, you have to do in the rest of your life, you know, as if you select as a job. And um, um, I mentioned, uh, you know, the health is important because you remember the aeroplane, you know, you have to use the oxygen first on you. If you are not okay, then you cannot help others. So you have to be happy, healthy, and, uh, and uh, uh, stressless. And uh, so you have to take care of yourself and then you can help uh, others. And uh, so the young one, Yes, uh, you know, we can go on and on how many things <laughs> I could uh, tell them that um, uh, how they should proceed. But uh, the most important thing is they have to enjoy what they are doing. And um, I have to say uh, what is important in, in, if it is they decide they will be scientists. What I could see is that you have to solve a problem. You are working on this problem. What, what is the uh, thing is that uh, you, public, you publish because you've discovered something, and then somehow you want more discovery, more money is needed, applying for a uh, fund, and, and then finally somehow publication is coming because we need more money, we need the promotion, and the goal will be somehow is um, advancing your career to promotion and other things, and uh, the prestige, and somehow the, the original goal became a tool to reach that. So you are publishing because you have to get your PhD degree, you need more grant, more money. So that's what, if you stay with the focus on solving scientific problem, you'll never be disappointed. When you move to this one, you know, to promote, and you don't get the promotion, then you get the disappointment. Because this will not uh, depend on you, maybe some other organization or superiority. But here, the problem is always there. You can always work on it. It is important in science to have women because we are thinking differently. We are multitasking. Guys cannot do very well that. And, um, and uh, uh, you know, that uh, people had different views, different thinking. As I mentioned, like, somebody is a physician, other is a basic scientist, and they are thinking differently. And they, if they work together and respect each other, then, you know, uh, a new invention can be uh, done. And, uh, and that's what I think is important, that... Um, uh, so that uh, I try to, you know, emphasize the, uh, that women is important for, for science, uh, you know, and uh, science need more women because, uh, you know, at the beginning there are many women uh, graduating schools and they have their dream, but uh, the difficulties might come when, uh, you know, they have a childbearing age and they want family. 
And um, so I was lucky in Hungary because we had high quality, affordable childcare. And um, so I could stay at work and I was confident my daughter is taken care of when I was working. And But uh, I can see in many countries that if you are not having enough uh, financial support, then you have to give up your job because that little baby is crying there and you have to take care of. And your dream is just the potential and then giving up is, seems uh, a solution to take care of your child. But, um, you know, I, if I government is listening, then, you know, we have to talk to them how important it would be because uh, more women could do more discoveries. You know, it is kind of like setting of a goal. You know, I, um, when I was practicing for the marathon, my daughter was biking next to me. Mom, come on, come on, you can do it, you can. And even when it was the race, she volunteered to give out water. Hardly could wait when I will reach that uh, water stand <laughs> that she can give me the water. And then she could see that because, you know, the race was in November. In March, I started to practice. You are not getting up one day, okay, today I run a marathon. You will be dead. You cannot run. So she could learn that you have to do the preparation every day, do something towards that goal. And that's what setting up goals is what is important for everybody. A child, uh, old people, everybody has to be a goal and then work towards that. And when you reach that, you are setting up a new goal. And that's how, you know, like they told me that you get a Nobel Prize and that's what you can do after that. I mean, that's not goal. A goal is that, you know, I'm doing my research and then uh, when I am done with certain things, then I set up a new goal. The, it cannot be a goal to get a, a award because anyway, it is not depends on me. I told that always I have to focus on what I can do. And those are other people's decision. And that's actually for the, for the uh, firing, you know, and terminating my position. I also said that it was other people's decision. And uh, I have to focus on what I can do. Instead of feeling sorry for myself, why me? There were other people who could be fired, why me? No, don't spend your time because you are feeling down and feeling sorry for yourself. You focus on, okay, now what should I do? Because that's, you can make a decision. And that's what important. And I mentioned that it's not necessary. You have to be happy that if you are terminated in position. I was not happy, but uh, did not spend time on uh, being sad. But kind of, I have to do something. Next. <laughs> I, in the process, as I mentioned uh, in elementary school, when I was writing about uh, Linné, it was for the high school advertised that uh, you can write an essay. So, you know, every day I was reading something, writing something, and you work towards and submitting that, you know, uh, that uh, essay. And that's, that's already the win. I'd never get any award for that. And what is not important that I set up a goal and accomplish, and then the next goal to set up. And maybe my daughter, you know, watching me, you know, uh, learn that. And that's what I say also the parents. You don't have to over-assist your child. You know, they like to be independent. They, and rather than what you are showing, that you go to work, you, what is important, how you talk to, to other people, that's what they watch and they could learn from that. You can tell them certain things and you, they can see that you are acting differently. They notice that and they will take on that. So if you work hard and the, you enjoy your work and your child want to do that also. Um, I uh, have to say that uh, I worked at BioNTech and BioNTech signed with Pfizer in 2018 to develop uh, mRNA-based vaccine for influenza. And so we already worked two years, 18 and 19, and we did all of the studies and uh, were ready for start the human trial for influenza. But, uh, you know, the technology is such that you just have to change, I just say just, but, you know, still is a process, change the template, and then you can make it a, a different kind of uh, vaccine. 
And that's what happened. So we were ready with, uh, with all of this preparation for another fight, another disease. But uh, here, you know, we had to uh, have prophylactic vaccine for, for the uh, SARS-CoV-2. And that was, you know, the influenza was ready. So it was a lot of uh, preparation was done for a different virus, but uh, it is now is phase three trial, the vaccine for influenza. It is very important that the RNA, because it is always from the four nucleotides, contains the four nucleotides, so we can have multivalent vaccine. So the influenza, again, influenza A and B and different, uh, many different protein encoding uh, RNA can be in one shot. And right now, not even just the influenza, but even the uh, COVID uh, vaccine and the uh, uh, respiratory syncytial virus is one, one shot because you can combine them. If it would be protein-based, you cannot do that because they will stick to each other and then we have an aggregate because the protein is, can be charged, negative, positive, or hydrophobic, hydrophilic, and you cannot mix them. But the RNA, you can do it. And the, and the subject will synthesize the protein and then you will, those protein will teach the immune system. That's what the enemy is, you have to recognize. I have to say that um, I myself, I never feel that I did. I uh, relied on the work on other, many other people. Why I, am, I was doing research for 20, 30 years. So I learned from reading articles from people who are not with us anymore. And I learned from it. I had colleagues and um, so many, many people who contributed. I feel that we did it. Uh, we scientists, uh, with all of my colleagues at uh, Pfizer, BioNTech, as well as, you know, University of Pennsylvania, and, and those uh, scientists who worked on the field. So I, that's how I, I feel. And uh, I have to say, I was lucky I never had this craving of recognition. So there are some people who want to be recognized. For me, it was enough that I know that what I did and what is important and uh, not that uh, other people would know. And, uh, but uh, for me, is really how I feel is that uh, is a lot of, lot of scientists, uh, hundreds and thousands of scientists contributed to the knowledge because the RNA was discovered 60 years ago. And during that 60 years, many things happened and I will present that on my uh, presentation and, um, and the Nobel presentation lecture and um, I will tell you that how many things was discovered and was contributed by scientists. As a scientist, I felt that, you know, I, I didn't expect it that uh, what I am doing will be that important. I know that it is important. I know that one day maybe other scientists will take on and uh, reaching and one day a level that somebody will be helped.